Um, so I'm a bit new to RAND, so this might sound like a stupid question, but... Yeah, no stupid questions. <laughs> Lots of stupid answers. Um, <laughs> I read on an article that RAND caused the romantic relationship between man and woman. Um, from a woman's point of view, it should be a romantic surrender. It was quoted like that. Yeah. And I felt a bit like the word surrender would, um, would be a bit synonymous with sacrifice. And I read a bit more and she said it's a surrender but a not so brutal one. And not a what? Sorry. Brutal one. Brutal one. Yeah. yeah, and obviously I was a bit, I was a bit confused about yeah. that, so yeah. I was wondering if you could um, explain it a bit more. Thank you. <laughs> That's one of the toughest questions I've ever got. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, I mean, Rand had a whole theory of femininity, masculinity, and, and sex, and relationships between men and women. And I'd say most of that is more in the realm of psychology than it is in the realm of philosophy. And you know, I'm, 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 you know, my understanding of philosophy is okay, but my understanding of psychology is, you know, not great. She viewed the essence of femininity, not of, you know, not that a woman was all this, but in that aspect of any human being that you were feminine, right? She viewed femininity as what she called hero worship, looking up to a hero, and that hero was a man. The man who went up to hunt, hunt or the man who goes out to, to, to do what he does, right? And that that's what it meant to be female, to have that attitude towards the male, the, the masculine, if you will. Right? Um, and that not in, and if you, if you read our novels, you, you see this, not in kind of, the surrender is not in uh, you know, we're having an argument, so I'm, I'm a female, so I surrender to you, whatever you say, <laughs> that's right, right? It's really in sex. So she viewed, she viewed sex as this incredibly important, fundamental, uh, fundamentally important to human nature and fundamentally to the human experience. And she said that the essential characteristic of femininity in sex is the surrender, the, 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 the being penetrated, in a sense. Now, again, you could accept that or not, right? It's, it's more psychological than anything else. But it's, a woman is, to the extent, to the, to the extent that the, the feminine part of her is to, to kind of worship, uh, the, the, to worship the masculine and to surrender its sex to him. And the, 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 what masculine means for Ryan is masculinity is about controlling nature. It's about an orientation to reality. It's about changing nature. If the woman is oriented towards the man, the man is oriented towards reality, towards nature, towards, towards the challenges of survival. Right? And in that sense, men are stronger and they protect women, right? So there's that, that kind of relationship or has been historically that kind of relationship. Uh, you know, who, who, have you read any of Grant's novels? Partially. Which one? Um, Atlas Shrugged. Shrug. So in Atlas Shrugged, even the part that you, the small part that you read or whatever part you read, I mean the hero is a woman. A woman, and this book is written in 1957, this is a woman who runs a railroad. She's smarter than anybody else in the book except maybe one guy, right? She's the smartest person in the whole book. She is the most passionate person in the whole book. She, nobody can run a railroad better than she can. She's the most competent person in, 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 in the book. Right, um, but she's looking in the novel. In a sense, she's looking for a man she can look up to. She's looking for somebody she can really admire, and that's her orientation, qua her feminine side, right? Qua sex, qua romantic relationships. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and, and, and that surrenders that you know, the, the masculine dominating, in a sense, the feminine in the sexual act. Not in business. <laughs> in business, she dominated everybody, right? She was strong and she was powerful. But, but in the relationship, in that romantic relationship, manifest in sex, she was looking to surrender. And that would be, uh, that would be kind of the, the, I think, the psychological interpretation. And 
there's a there's a beautiful painting that actually uh, by painted by the name of uh, Capuletti that hung in Ayn Rand's uh, living room, um, and it's it's I guess it's above the fireplace or whatever, and it's a it's a it's a painting that divides people very strongly. Art is very powerful because it projects this, and I I, I find the painting the painting really projects this vision of femininity because it's 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 a beautiful woman. A powerful woman with penetrating eyes. The eyes remind me of Iron Man's eyes. These strong eyes. But she's on her knees. Her hand, she's naked. She's on her knees. Her hands are behind her back and she's looking up. And she's got that sense of power, strength, dominance, and surrender at the same time. And, and I think that was the ideal woman for Iron Man. That, that vision of what a woman could be. But that's, again, more psychology than philosophy. Isn't surrender in itself too like an act of power almost, right? Like the like the act of surrender is like a will. It's a sure. willful action. Right? Sure, it's a willful action. It's a willful action over yourself. You you have to be willing, and you're not going to surrender to anybody. Right. You only need to surrender to that which you admire, and that which you love, and that which you want to surrender to. You've chosen to surrender to. So, you know, I you know I personally think it makes sense. In my experience with men and females, it makes sense. Uh, but I understand that, you know, I, I know particularly in, in the world in which we live, people find that. You know, I think I, I think it's, I think the, 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 one of the important observations is, and, and philosophically, and I think just empirically, is men and women are different. They're not the same. They, 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 it's not one is smarter than the other. It's certainly men are stronger than women. Um, but there's psychologically, there's something different there. And, and defining what that is, I think that's what, that's what Rand is doing. I mean, do you know the Me Too movement in the US? I mean, I find the Me Too movement very interesting, right? I mean, I, 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 I'm horrified by the stories that they tell and how men treat women. It's just disgusting and awful. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, one of the, you know, during Kavanaugh's hearings, there was this thing about, this guy jumped on, on the girl and he he, 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 he like lay on top of her and, and uh, you know, this traumatized her, she says, for life, right? Well, guys jump on one another all the time, right? And, it, and that's not as threatening as when a guy jumps on a girl. When a guy jumps on a girl, that is not acceptable and that is very threatening. And it should be very threatening. So, there's something about the fact that men generally are stronger than women that has psychological effects, rational psychological effects, on the relationship between them. It's the best I can do. It. It's not a psychologist. Doctor Brook, I feel like I feel like like there's a there's a clear answer in my mind that there's a there's a talking about the the idea of surrender and masculinity and femininity femininity and men and women are not the same um the, the biological basis for that especially in the context of family where a woman is surrendering or at least putting a great deal of trust in a man when they choose to start a family for example a woman is making herself incredibly vulnerable, vulnerable. And saying, "Hey, I trust you." Yes, I think there's a. I think that's right. I think there's a certain vulnerability there, and and uh, you're going to stick around. You can take care of this child, but of course, women can take care of themselves. So, particularly in a modern context, and this is this is the challenge. Like 500 years ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation because it's obvious, right? But in a modern context, in which most values and most wealth creation and most jobs and most careers affect the mind. Where there's no where there's no difference between men and women, um, you can see why people object to the idea of differences, right? So a woman today can have a baby, and feed it, and clothe it, and take care of it, and live with it by herself without a man, and do fine. I have no, I don't think there's any question about that because our world is different today. Because our world relies less on muscle, less on strength, and more on the mind. But there was there are biological differences. I don't want to spend the whole time in, in talking about femininity and masculinity. But the biological differences, I think, are what matter. The woman has to carry the child, and it, you know the fact of the differences biologically manifests itself in differences psychologically. But I'm not a psychologist to tell you exactly what those differences are.
And by the way, if you enjoy the show, if uh, if you on regularly and you get value from what I do, then I'd appreciate support uh, to to make this show possible and and to keep it going and to. Uh, we will get on a much more regular schedule starting in October, and we will be doing a lot more shows starting in October. I'm going to be traveling a lot less next year and, and uh, through the fourth quarter of this year. So once I'm traveling less, we'll get a lot more shows. So I'm hoping that you guys will consider supporting the show. You can support it through still through Patreon. Uh, you can support it through subscribestar.com, and you can support it on my website, Show dot com slash support so uh, those of you who might not be supporting me yet please do so those of you who are supporting me you know if you'd consider kind of on an annual basis doing a 10 percent increase that would be fantastic and uh, so that we can uh, increase what we do uh, over time what we need today what i call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes, 